Okay, this is a real quick tour of the Natural Resources Conservation Service, or the NRCS, often referred to, which is an agency within the U.S. Department of Agriculture. This is their Idaho Snow Survey site, and um, we're I'm going to give you sort of a tour of this site to give you an idea of, of what you can find here. You can find some uh, really useful figures and plots and interactive plots to interact with, which I'll um, subsequent, which I'll show at the end of this short lecture. But if we take a real quick look, um, th this here, this site here, um, which I will post the the um, the link to, provides us basin-wide products. Um, so these are kind of estimates at the scale of an entire watershed or, or water supply basin that the NRCS is focused on. Um, and in particular, it lets us create interactive plots for three different variables that are exceptionally important um, in, in terms of monitoring snowpack and potential water resources for the water year. So the things that we're interested in looking at first and foremost is the snow water equivalent in the basin. Um, and uh, the second is the, the, the precipitation. So what's actually fallen is precipitation. And finally is the temperature, right? So uh, you could you can get an idea of, of how the, the three of these variables, why you would want to see these if you're thinking about this from a water supply perspective, right? So we would think of the snow water equivalent as kind of the volume of water that's stored in that snowpack that ultimately would be available for um, for runoff and, and water supply downstream to, to users, to farmers um, later on in the season. Uh, the precipitation sort of gives you an idea of, of how much actual precipitation it is, right? So you can you can compare the snow water equivalent with the precipitation to get an idea of, okay, how how effective has that precipitation been at increasing this um, snow reservoir, as it were? So, for instance, in a, in a very cold year, you might expect um, the the precipitation and the snow to track each other pretty well. If all of the precipitation is falling as snow, it should in principle wind up in, in the snowpack. Uh, conversely, in a very warm year, for instance, you might see um, increases in, or as precipitation increases, uh, the, the snow, uh, snow water equivalent increases at a slower rate, right? Meaning that uh, some of the precipitation that's coming is arriving as rain and it's not being stored in that snowpack. Um, finally, the temperature, right? The temperature gives us an idea of, um, you know, the extent to which we can expect that snowpack to start to warm up to so-called ripen, to get close to the point where it's melting. Um, and the, the temperature gives us an idea of, you know, how warm or cold of a, of a precipitation season have we had? How warm, cold has it been recently? Um, to give us an idea of, of perhaps how quickly that snowpack is melting. So uh, you can look at um, either of these, any of these, snow water, precipitation, uh, temperature, for a variety of different basins. Um, and if you click the drop down menu here, what it will show you is an alphabetical arrangement of all of the all of the watersheds, the basins that the Idaho Snow Survey is monitoring throughout the state of Idaho. Uh, you see the, the usual suspects here, um, the Boise, the Big Wood, the Bruno, um, Henry's Fork we'll take a look at. Um, and, you know, these are these are kind of the really, really important basins in terms of monitoring snow, uh, snow water storage for downstream users, right? So these are the ones that you can think of uh, the, the Idaho Snow Survey as keeping a really close eye on throughout the course of each year. So we're going to look at SWE, um, snow water equivalent, in the Henry's Fork Teton River system. So I'm going to go ahead and, and click Henry's Fork Teton. And um, when I click open chart, it's going to open a new window with an interactive chart. Um, I'm actually not going to press it right now, but what I am going to do is um, stop the video open the chart um, and zoom in on only the chart so we're only seeing the chart and sort of explain what you're seeing.
Okay, so this is a plot of the snow water equivalent in the Henry's Fork Teton River system, right? So this is out in eastern Idaho. It drains the western side of the Teton Range into the Henry's Fork River, which ultimately um, uh, drains into the Snake. Uh, this is a very important sub-watershed of the upper Snake River system. Uh, it's known uh, for its exceptionally great trout fishing. So there's uh, the whole Henry's Fork Foundation, which is sort of devoted to ensuring a sustainable fishery in the Henry's Fork system. So this is a, a very important basin from uh, an, an economic perspective uh, in terms of agriculture and in terms of recreation. Uh, it, it also is sort of an important tributary for uh, the, the people of the Shoshone-Bannock tribe. Um, so it's also sort of culturally relevant as well. Okay, so um, I'm just going to take you through what we're looking at um, in this in this plot here, um, because it, there's there's a lot kind of going on. Um, it's it's a sort of busy plot, but once you kind of know what you're looking at, um, then it becomes a little bit easier to to navigate. But we'll take the time to actually go through. So the first thing, let's talk about what's being plotted here. So what's being plotted on the y-axis here is snow water equivalent in units of inches. And so this is the, you know, basically the equivalent uh, depth of, of snow water um, were it distributed evenly over the entire Henry's Fork uh, River Basin. Um, and, um, you know, so if you took all of the snow, so the, the snow is not evenly distributed in the Henry's Fork Basin. There's a, a lot more up way high up in the tall mountains of the watershed on the western flank of the Tetons. There's very, very little once you get down to the confluence with the Snake River. But if you basically were able to sort of, you know, take that all of that snow that's up in the mountains and bulldoze a uniform cover of that snow, so there was all the same snow water equivalent throughout the basin, um, and then reduce that to a, a depth, a single depth, right? Um, you would get a value of of this. That is this snow water equivalent, right? So, this is actually a volume here in that um, we have the basin wide snow water equivalent in a unit of depth, if we were then able to multiply that by the watershed area of the Henry's Fork Teton system, we would get the volume of snow water stored in the watershed. So, and if you're looking at the y-axis here, it goes from zero and it goes to about 40 inches. Um, this maximum value will sort of rescale depending on which river you're looking, which river watershed system you're looking at. Okay, on the x-axis here is um, is the is time, right? The the period, the time of year, um, and the it's important when this is uh, plotted, and it's important. This is an important concept to know about in general in hydrologic sciences. But this is this is plotted from the start of the so-called water year. So particularly in the Western United States. We define um, the start of the water year as October 1st. So the water year runs from October 1st through September 30th of the following year. So this water year, water year 2021, started on October 1st of 2020. Okay, so um, you're always kind of starting in October with the with the water year of the the following calendar year. Okay, and the reason um, we do this uh, is a little bit arbitrary, but you know when you look at the the plot this way, um, it starts to make sense. So in the Western United States, most of our watersheds, most of our large water supply watersheds look like this, right? They start off with very little. Um, you know, snow water storage in them in October, right? And um, that, as we get into the the northern hemisphere winter, we start to get precipitation, the buildup of a snowpack. That snowpack peaks somewhere historically around April 1st, and it declines, and ultimately, um, you know, there's no more snow in the system by say late June, early early July, and so. Effectively, we declare the the water year to begin in October um, simply because it shifts the curve here so that um, we look at the entire growth and um, accumulation phase and the ablation phase or the 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 
diminution or decrease of this snow water equivalent curve um, in a single figure, right? It's not it's not broken here right at January 1st. We're getting all of the figure and it's kind of centered in the middle, right? April 1st is about the date that's kind of right in the middle. In fact, it is right in the middle of, of our figure, right? So we, we want the, the peak snow water equivalent day approximately to be in the middle of our figure. Okay, so um, this shows, um, so we're, th this is where it sort of starts to get more complicated, right? So you're, you're seeing a whole bunch of lines here. The first one that we will look at is this blue line. So this blue line shows us the maximum value of snow water equivalent in our Henry's Fork Teton River system on any given date of the year, right? So um, if we look at, uh, let's look at March uh, March 1st, right? So March 1st, okay, right about, uh, right about here. Okay, so we're, there we go, all right. So on March 1st here, the, the maximum snow water equivalent recorded, and remember this is the, the depth, the uniform depth of snow water equivalent across the entire Henry's Fork Basin. The maximum value on March 1st was 32.5 inches, okay? Um, so the, the blue curve is, is going to track for us day by day um, what the maximum value ever recorded or ever estimated for that basin-wide snow water equivalent um, in the Henry's Fork Teton system on any given day of the year. Now, the important thing to, to bear in mind with respect to this maximum is that this is the max, on any given day, this is the maximum across all years, right? So anytime you're looking at these snow tell sites, um, it's, it's highly unlikely that this maximum curve corresponds to any given year, right? So this blue curve is not a particular year. Um, this is just the maximum uh, value of snow water equivalent that was recorded across all of the years in the historical record on this particular date. Okay, so why that becomes important is because, you know, our when we think of the year in which, um, if we get really big, um, you know, really big years in snow water equivalent, right? Um, they can occur in different ways, right? So um, you can get a big start to the year and then it sort of, you know, fades away. You can get years that start slow and then catch up really quickly, right? And so um, it's important just to remember that this blue line does not, it does not signify any particular year. It just of across all of the years on this particular day. Okay, the, um, the, the red line, by contrast, is just the exact opposite of that, right? So that is the minimum value of snow water equivalent recorded uh, or estimated in the Henry's Fork Teton River Basin on any particular day of the year. Okay, so if we go again to that March 1st date, if we if we remember um, the maximum value was uh, 32.5, try and get as close to March 1st as I can here. It doesn't really make a difference. Um, so on March 1st, it looks like it was about 11.9 is, is the minimum, right? So again, um, the same caveat on the maximum side as uh, on the minimum side. Um, this, um, what's important to remember is that this is not, this red line here is not any particular um, year. Um, it just happens to be the, the minimum value of snow water equivalent um, on on this day in any of in in all of the years in the historical record. Okay, so the next most important line. So we've covered the the maximum value and the minimum value, and you can sort of see what's cool about this is as I as I hover over. Um, I haven't said this explicitly yet, right? It um, it it sort of highlights for me interactively kind of what the actual value is. Um, the next most important line that we want to talk about is uh, the the median value, right? So the median value is the value on any given day of the year. So let's go back to March 1st, right? So there's March 1st and the, the median snow on March 1st is uh, 20.4 uh, inches of snow water equivalent. So the, the median is, um, you can think of it as being very closely related to the average. 
it's not precisely the average, but um, the median, the easiest way to think about it is that um, on March 1st, 50% of the historical years um, were, either, were above 20.4 inches of snow water equivalent, and 50% of those historical years were below 20.4. Uh, inches per uh, of snow water equivalent. So 50% 50, 50 above, 50% below. So it's, it's right in the smack dab in the middle. Okay. Uh, mathematically, that's not exactly the average except under very special cases. Um, but um, it's, it's something like an average. It's just a different kind of average. Okay. So, um, so this median curve basically is sort of the, another way of saying that is that this is the 50th percentile, right? So it's right right in the middle okay um the this little x here that's a that's another sort of um important value um so if you were to take all of these individual years right if we had traces of each and every year which we could do and i'll show you how to do that in a second if you had traces of each and every year and you went out every year and you picked off the maximum value so you picked off the maximum value regardless of what day it occurred on because you know some days it occurs you know earlier some years it occurs later um and and if you just picked that maximum value um, from each and every one of those individual years and you said, okay, what is, where is the value in the middle? Where is the value that balances them? Where, where again, 50% of my peak snow water equivalent values are below and 50% above, that is this value in, in X, right? And, um, and April 8th is actually the, the, the average day, right? So if I looked at both the average amount, that's 25 and a, and a half. So, you know, in any given year, um, so of all of the years, um, the peak has, 50% of the peak squeeze have been above 25.2. 50% .2. Um, of the peak squeeze have been below 25.2, right? And you can think of that April 8th date as, as similar to that, but in time. So 50% um, of, the, of, of the peak squeeze has occurred before April 8th, 50% of the days of peak snow water equivalent have occurred after April 8th, right? So this is kind of the date and squeeze value that is sort of right in the middle of all of my values. Okay, the next most important line that we can um, that we can talk about is this current year, which is shown here in black. So this is water year 2021. Um, and if you look at where we're at, um, so what's what's sort of cool about this is that so when you see the me median curve here, right, it's a lot smoother than either the the min or the max curve or any individual year. So when you look at an, at an individual year, you see the impact of individual snowstorms that will come and will sort of last maybe a couple days, two, three, four days, and just lead to a rapid increase in snow water equivalent followed by you know three, four, or five days afterwards where you basically get no change in snow water equivalent, right? So each individual year kind of has this stair-steppy function to it as as you go through time. Okay, so um, so this is this current water year. Um, if we if we take a look at what the the snow water equivalent, it's updated as of today. Um, and today is February 2nd. Um, the snow water equivalent is 15.9. Uh, um, and that's, as you can see, uh, I can't move my mouse, but uh, the, um, to the right of that, it says uh, 2021 uh, and then in parentheses five sites. So it's it's basically constructing an estimate of, of peak snow water equivalent based on five of the NRCS's snow telemetry sites. Okay, so this is the estimate of snow water equivalent in the Henry's Fork system as of today. And as you can see, it's it's slightly below the median, but this year has largely sort of been tracking the, the median, right? So to this point, at least, we would say that this is a relative average, relatively average snow year. Okay. So one question you might want to ask is, okay, well, how does this compare to other other years, right? How does um, how does 2021 so far compare with what uh, some other year looks like? Um, I do know that uh, water year 2017 was a was a relatively big year. That was um, you know the year we got lots of uh, atmospheric rivers 
particularly on the West Coast. For those of you that remember, that was the year that the spillway at the Oroville Dam in California failed. Um, so we'll, well, if you look over here in the legend, so it's already sort of, uh, you know, we, um, it, it's labeled kind of those things that, um, that we've already covered, the median peak SWE, the max, the min, uh, the, the median SWE on any given day, and then here's 2021. I can actually tap, toggle on 2017 here. So if I just click this, it's going to highlight what 2017 look, looks like for me and um, in uh, the Henry's Fork water system. And um, uh, somewhat surprisingly, 2017, at least in the Henry's Fork system, wasn't that, I mean, it was about an average snow year, um, which is, I guess, a little bit surprising. I hadn't looked at this before I turned it on. But, you know, you could sort of see that, okay, well, you know, on this date, um, in so February 7th, 6th, 7th, um, in 2017, we were at 18.8. Uh, .8. We're now at 15.9. So, you know, we're maybe, you know, 20%-ish behind uh, where we were at um, uh, this time four years ago, right? So um, this gives us a good way of sort of checking like, okay, well, I, I sort of remember 2017 being a big year. Um, you know, how, how did that, how are we doing compared with that year? Another big year that's going way back now um, is 1997. So I'm going to toggle that. And, um, and here's something that's sort of an important you know, important part of that caveat. So, um, so if we look at 1997, it's way up here on the max for most of the time. So 1997 was a very, very wet year, right? So if we look at uh, February 6th, uh, we were up at, uh, you know, 30, 30 inches of snow water equivalent. That's double what we have now, right? So that was a big year. But then what you look and see, and this is what exactly what I was talking about here is, um, uh, you know, as, as you look here, so it was the maximum until about, you know, maybe late March. And then, you know, there's a couple more storms in that water year, 1997, um, you know, but but um, it wasn't the maximum, right? So even though, you know, uh, water year 1997 was, was a big year and it was higher than any year most of the time during the, the snow accumulation phase, um, it was not the peak peak SWE year, right? Um, and in fact, um, there was a relatively rapid kind of melt, right? So the, the melt out, the day at which the, the SWE in that year effectively went to zero was actually considerably earlier than, than the median year, right? So, so you can get um, a pretty cool idea of looking at um, these different years, right? And um, this, this is useful in particular when you're, um, you know, if you have a, a job where you're dealing with a lot of stakeholders, uh, like ranchers, farmers, um, you know, f folks that know the land, know the location really well, um, this is helpful because oftentimes, you know, those folks have a lot of really great information relative to historic years, right? They may say like, oh yeah, my best year for hay yields was in, you know, uh, 2006 or, you know, whatever. And you can actually sort of go back and based on that information kind of, you know, toggle that year and say, okay, well, you know, I, I know somebody said that, you know, this was a particular good year for this, whatever it is, whether it's kind of, oh, the trout fishing was great this year, the hay yields were great. Um, oh yeah, we were able to pasture our, you know, our, our sheep up in the, in the basin longer, um, you know, you can start to, to, to put the story together in a quantitative way by, by taking a look at all of these different years, right? So this is what this data is, is really useful for. Um, a couple more things before I wrap this, uh, little lecture up. Um, so I'll turn 1997 off. I'll turn 2017 off. Um, the the shading that you're seeing here, this is the la um, one of the last things that I want to talk about on the graph itself. Um, these kind of these sh uh, these are showing basically um, what are our uh, percentiles, right? So so these are sort of different um, different ranges of our um, of our curve, right? So we, we talk about, um, you know, so this would be the, the 80th to 100th percentile, um, the, the 60th to 80th percentile, the 40th to 60th percentile, um, the, um, the 40th to 20th percentile and the 20th percentile below. Um, and sometimes what that's helpful for, right, is you can, you can say, okay, well, um, you know, 
I, I can look at this from a more probabilistic perspective. So I can say, okay, so um, if I look out um, and and I see, you know, my 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 uh, this kind of cyan peak here, right? So if I look at the peak here and say that's about you know like 32.5. It's right in the middle between 30 and 35 inches. Um, what this allows me to say, right, is that 80%, because this is the 60th to 80th percentile, 80th, 80 percent of my years in the Henry's Fork Teton system will have a peak SWE that is less than about 32 and a half inches of snow water equivalent, right? So, or conversely, I can say, um, okay, so 20% of the time. Okay, because this is 80% up to 100%, 20% of the time, I'm going to have a snow water equivalent that is a peak snow water equivalent that is larger than 32.5, right? So um, we can start to, to think about some uh, probabilistic interpretations of our, of our SWE curves, right? Um, uh, similarly, you can look at an individual year here and say, okay, like we are right down the middle of, you know, between the... Um, you know, between the um, 40th and 60th percentile here, right? We're right in that range of being an average, an average snow year. Okay. The final thing that I'll um, point out to you is that you can actually do some. Um, they they have some tools up here for you to do some annotations of these figures, right? So if you wanted to draw a line, right? I want to draw a line right across here, and you know maybe look at different values here so if i if i want to look at okay when um when about will an um you know an 80th percentile year kind of cross 30 inches of SWE and then cross below it right so i can look at a, a duration of time um that my 80th percentile year would be above 30 inches i can i can do things like things like that right so i can um, i can annotate it i can add you know free form things Right, I can draw individual lines, um, and then in addition to that, I can I can download this plot as a PNG. Right, if you need to make a presentation to, for instance, a set of ranchers um, or you know a water supply or a class of students, for instance, um, you can you can download this plot as a PNG to your local file now local computer. Now it won't have any of this kind of interactive capability, um, but it, it will keep your um, annotation. So it's, it's sometimes helpful for being able to mark something up and then and then save that. So um, so there's a quick, um, not quick, but uh, there's a, a tour of the, the, um, the NRCS's interactive uh, snow survey website. And this is a this is a great site. Uh, you will undoubtedly, I believe, have cause to use this this site or sites similar to this from the NRCS in the future. Uh, so it's it's a good idea to to get under the hood a little bit and um, read the graphs and and get comfortable with with what you're looking at. So.